Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 24th of August 2020 and the time has just gone 11.42 British summer time. And it's been a fairly positive start to the uh, European trading session. Uh, we've more than recouped that the, uh, the ground that European stocks lost at the back end of last week. We had some pretty disappointing um, manufacturing and services figures from France. The numbers from Germany were a bit mixed. They weren't amazing either. So that prompted fears in Europe that, in, in, in the Eurozone, in continental Europe, that, that the, the odds of a V-shaped recovery are looking, are, are looking lower. Um, there, there is a, a cooling off in economic economic activity, which kind of sparked fears that maybe we've had a fairly sharp rebound from the economies being reopened, but now it could be tapering off. But um, in the last, say, 48 hours, in, in the last uh, few days, we have heard from President Trump, uh, who's, who's considering uh, fast-tracking a, a drug which, is, which has been developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca. And the drug in question uh, has a bit, is, uh, is the potential to be a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so the, the, US, the US leader is looking at potentially fast-tracking this drug for approval. Um, that should it be the case, he'll be looking at doing that in October. Keep in mind, President Trump is running for re-election in November. So, <clears throat> excuse me, there's clearly a political play uh, here whereby he wants to kind of see him that he's in, he's, in, he's in control, in charge, he's in control of the health crisis. Uh, so he's clearly looking to actually um, try and do whatever he can to kind of go into that election, uh, saying that basically he's in charge and not COVID-19. Uh, for those of you who follow uh, these videos regularly, I'll do, usual, I'll do the usual rundown. We'll start off looking at the week ahead, then I'll look at a few of the major markets, indices, currencies, and commodities. So first things first, uh, let's take a, qu a quick look at what's going on on the, uh, on the week ahead. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under, in under insights, you can find it under news and analysis. Uh, we, can see, we can see it right here, uh, the week ahead, um, starting off, this, this week's is US GDP, WPP, HP, Rolls Royce. They're the big ones. Um, so tomorrow we have second quarter figures out from Best Buy. Uh, tomorrow we have second quarter German GDP, and we also have the IFO uh, indicator coming out as well on, on Wednesday. Second quarter numbers from Williams Sonoma. On Thursday, uh, Hewlett Packard HP have a, a third a third quarter results out. Um, one of the bigger ones to watch this week, as far as the UK is concerned, um, Rolls Royce. Um, they've been kind of struggling recently. They've had engine, a couple, they've, they've had issues with a couple of their of their engines, and on top of that, the aviation sector has been really hit hard because of uh, COVID-19, and therefore demand for engines uh, has, has really taken taking a knock. Um, we have the Jackson Hole um, Symposium at the back end of the week, uh, starting on Thursday. Um, we also have second quarter US GDP on Thursday. What's become very important the last few months, uh, the US weekly jobless claims. Uh, we, on Thursday, we also have first half figures from WPP, the advertising giant. Let's see how they're doing in terms of uh, abilities to gain revenue because the likes of Google and Co have become and Facebook have become very strong uh, at snapping up revenue away from uh, traditional uh, advertising agencies such as WPP. And we have U.S. personal spending and income uh, from the from from the U.S. Um, at, at the uh, at the back end of the week. Um, turning our attention now to the to the major indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. The broad trend of the last few months has been that we've had a decent move from the upside from late March into, into June. But since then, we've been trading sideways. Um, it's kind of being a bit directionless. Um, this zone here has kind of failed to get above 6,342. But at the same time, we are back above the kind of psychologically important 6,000 mark. So if you look at the price action of today's candle is 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 quite bullish um so if we do look to kind of if you can continue to hold above 6000 uh it's likely we could see it retesting this blue line the 50 day moving average and that comes into play at 6154 notice how on a few occasions recently that metric acted nicely as resistance so if the metric has been important in the past it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future although there are no guarantees so if you press on higher beyond that and go beyond say 6,200, 
we could then be looking at retesting the mid-August highs, this area here. And we'd really need to be getting above this zone here. I mentioned a moment ago, 6,342, 6,340, that's general area. It's, it's a struggle to get above the metric, uh, basically from, from, Ju from late June onwards. So we really need to kind of get above that to then be kind of become more confident that the kind of the wider trend for the last few months is in play. Conversely, uh, if the market turns over on itself and we do have drop back below 6,000, we could then be looking at heading back down toward this zone down around here, the lows of early August in around 5,852. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading down toward this zone here in at 5,800. Take a look at what's going on over in Germany. So the German market has been, has been in a solid upward trend the last few months. Um, it's been in better shape than the FTSE 100 because notice how the lows that were achieved in late July were still well above the lows that were achieved in June. And even though the highs of August have yet to take out the highs of July yet, we've had a fairly decent move today on today's candle. It's looking quite, this is quite a bullish move we're seeing so far. We're not too far away from the highs of the middle of August. So if we press on higher from here and we, and we take out the highs of mid-August, we could then be heading up, heading up towards the highs of, uh, of late July. And if you go beyond that metric, you know, we'd then be looking at levels last seen at the back end of February. Essentially, we're kind of really when the kind of crisis began. So we could be looking heading up towards somewhere in the region of 13,500. Uh, on the flip side, if we do see a pullback, we could see support come into play from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, you know, once again, and you know, not too long ago, it acted nicely as support. Um, so keep an eye out for that area. And that comes into play in around 12,673. And it's only really if you're going to take out the lows of early August in this zone here, uh, in around 12,515 there, thereabouts. It's only really if you're going to head below that, could we be, could be thinking we're in for a fairly sizable correction. And should that be the case, we could look at retesting this red line here, the true day moving average in at, uh, well, just south of 12,200. But notice how the turn to moving average acted nicely uh, as support back in at the very end of July. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. The Dow is in fairly decent shape, where the Dow is poised uh, to open around 28,175, 180. There, thereabouts. It looks like the highs that you know, the highs that we're, we're going to be setting when the cash market gets trading, is going to take out the highs of August. So we are talking about levels last seen in February. So I give indication of how strong things are over in the US. And if we're going to continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading back up towards in around you know 28,890 kind of levels last seen in, in very much kind of you know the last second or th say the third week. Of February, just as the kind of COVID-19 crisis was really setting in. Uh, on the flip side, if we manage to kind of move a bit lower, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold because, let's face it, you know, buying on the dip has been a fairly popular strategy the last number of months. So if we do uh, have a move to the downside, support could be found from this zone here, that the lows of late last week in around 27,449. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading back toward the psychologically you know big number of 27,000 and a move below that could take us back toward this blue line here the 50 day moving average which you know on a few occasions acted nicely as support and the 50 day moving average comes into play at 26,650. Now the S&P 500 is set to post a, a new record so which seems crazy given what's going, going on in the world but the bulls have really latched onto this um, fast track um, potential COVID-19 vaccine story. So, you know, we've, uh, we're looking at setting a new all time high, you know, uh, in terms of the, the, the futures market are pointed to a fresh record intraday high uh, once cash trading gets underway. So that'll give you an indication of how bullish sentiment is. Even if you do have a pullback, support could be found in around 3,400. And if you go below that, in around this area here, in around 3,550, and a move below that could take us back down towards this zone here in around 3,326. So take a look now at what's going on uh, on the currency markets, starting off with Euro dollar. So the, the dollar index has been in focus uh, 
um, for all the wrong reasons recently. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, the dollar index fell to its lowest level in over two years, and conversely, euro dollar, which makes up a large portion of the dollar index, hit its highest level in over two years. So we can see that euro dollar has been a nice upward trend the last few months. This high that was achieved uh, only, well, nearly a week ago uh, was basically that was, um, I, think, I believe it was a 20, 27 month high. So highest level uh, in over two years. It's still very much in the upward trend, although it has been, you know, edging a bit lower the last few sessions, it's still in its upward trend. And notice how in uh, from, from August, the lows that we've seen in August are getting higher. So even though we're not making a huge amount of progress at retesting the recent highs, the lows are getting higher. So the bias is to the upside. So if we press on higher from here, because we're currently in around one spot, 1832, we could be looking at targeting 120. And even if you do drift a bit lower, support could be found from this zone here in around one spot, 1696. And a drop below that could, could see support in around the one spot 16 area. And if you head south of that, we could be looking at testing, retesting rather, the blue line here, the 50 moving average, which acted as support um, yeah, in, in, in late May. The 50 day moving average comes into play in at one spot 15.32. So the pound has also done pretty well versus the US dollar in, in recent months because of the dollar weakness. It has done as well as zero, but it's still doing pretty well. So it's been a nice upward trend. It was only last week we saw the um, pound dollar at its highest level since January this year. So that'll give you an indication of how strong things are in relation to pound dollar. We're still in the upward trend. To be fair, kind of a range bound the last few sessions, but the bias still remains to the upside while we hold above this area here in at one spot 30. So if we do head, head back up, we move higher from here and we can retake the 132 area. We could then be looking at targeting this level here, the highs of late December in at one spot at 32.84. A move of the downside might find support in this zone in at one spot 30. Uh, and if you head below head below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the kind of 128 area. Coming on to commodities now, let's take a look at gold. Uh, it's had a good run the last, uh, well, didn't see a lot of vo volatility in the month of August. Um, but if you take a look at the price action, it's powering ahead for months and months. One of the reasons for this was the weakness in the US dollar, which you just discussed a moment ago. In addition to that, all the exceptional um, you know, stimulus packages and easing from central banks around the world has put huge pressure on government bond deals. Some of those government bond yields are exceptionally low. Others are in negative territory. Uh, so some investors who would ordinarily be plowing their money into government bonds think, you know what, I, 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 I want to avoid uh, a very low yield or even negative yields so I might pour some funds into gold. Hence why we saw gold uh, only at the beginning of this month hit an all time high. So we've obviously seen quite a bit of volatility since then, but you know we're still comfortably above 1900 because we're, we're currently trading around 1950. We're still well above the lows of the middle of August. Uh, so the, the, the wider upward trend is still very much intact. So if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this, this area here in around Two thousand dollars, and if you if you want to if, if you do take out two thousand dollars, traders will then be set, setting their attention uh, on the recent all-time highs. If on the flip side uh, we do kind of move lower from here, we could be looking at heading back towards nineteen hundred, and if we go below that, we could be looking at he heading back towards this zone here, uh, in around eighteen sixty-three. And notice how not only on a few occasions did eighteen sixty-three itself uh, act as support, particularly the lows of mid-August. That price also coincides with the 50 day moving average, which acted nicely as support on a few occasions in June. So when you have a price point that is kind of from, a, from, from, from more than one point of view has been important recently, it makes that even more important because some people who follow the moving averages, some people who follow re recent lows kind of converge on each other. Uh, so, that, so if we do have a move to the downside, this could be a fairly significant area. And lastly, I'll take a look at the oil market, Brent crude oil, the October contract. To be honest, oil has been reasonably boring the last, you know, the last few weeks. It's had a great re re recovery from late, from late April uh, until early August, when it hit, its, when it's at its highest level since March. So we're talking about a five-month high was achieved not that long ago, only at the, at the beginning of the month or the kind of the middle of the month. 
beginning of the month, um, but it's been trading in a reasonably small range ever since then. Uh, we've had a, a few moves to the downside, for example, on Friday when sentiment across the board was negative, um, but we recovered some of those losses. So the bias still remains to the upside. And if we can impress on higher from here, we could look, be looking at retesting the highs of August. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting uh, the lows of late March. Obviously, we, we had the brutal gap down um, uh, in the first week in March. Uh, if we do manage to move a bit lower from here, support could be found from this blue line, the 50 day moving average of $43.46. And if we head below that, we could be looking heading down towards the uh, the late the lows of late July, this area here, in a 41 spot 72. And if we go below that, we could be like heading back down towards the you know psychologically important 40 bucks per barrel. And that's all from me this week. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Have a good trading week and good luck.